spirit. And to our hearts today, we thank you for your presence. And Lord, we don't just ask that you be here, but we ask you to fill us. Let there be an outpouring. Lord, let there be a, a baptism. Let there be fire and anointing. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that your divine ability would dwell in us so that we may do great works. We thank you for the gift of salvation today. We understand that every good and perfect gift is from above. And we thank you for the gift of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for life today. And not only regular life, but eternal life and life more abundantly in you. What a victory we have. Yes. We thank you that you opened doors and you made ways that we did not deserve. So we come with humble hearts this morning. We come not with arrogance, but humility saying, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so kind. You've been so merciful. And it's because of you today, we are not consumed that we can stand here forgiven and loved. Mm. And so we bless you. We praise you. And as we gather around your word today, I pray you speak for your word with authority, with integrity. Let these words that I speak become sound doctrine, Lord Jesus. Speak to your church. Mm. Sounds on fire mm. forever and ever that we may glorify you in all things. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. 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 Today will be our fourth installment and the doctrine of the Holy Spirit series. Specifically today we'll be discussing the divine perfections of God. Scripture reference today is Psalm 71 and 19. Psalm 71 and 19. And the word of the Lord declares the following. Your righteousness reaches to the skies. Oh God, you who have done great things, who, oh God, is like you? <laughs> the psalmist presents an interesting question. Who is like God? If we were to search everywhere and anywhere, you could find no one like him. This is why the songwriter said, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus, because he comes down where I am. No, not one. No, not one. One that will heal all my soul's diseases. One who won't give me a life sentence for the mistakes I've made. One who loves me in spite of me. The prophet Isaiah, when he talked about God, he talked about the unfathomability, which means that there is no way that we can measure him. There's no way we can, can calculate his greatness. He says, as far as the heavens are above the earth, Lord, that's how your ways are above my ways. And your thoughts are above my thoughts. So when we look at God, we look at perfection. Nobody else has it but him. Everybody else is living in a glass house. 
you got a skeleton somewhere. But God is perfect. He's perfect. He has no flaws. He has no blemishes. He has no defects. And when the scripture tells us to be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect, it's not talking about being flawless. But what it's saying is that I've got to mature and grow up in some things. And I've got to get the attitude and the mindset of God. Allowing that same mindset that was in Jesus. What was that mindset? That mindset was to be a humble servant, to love, to forgive, and to do the works that the Father sent him to do. When we look at the divine perfections of God, I want you to know they can only be accomplished through his Holy Spirit. And we've had this discussion in a lot of detail, and it's one of the greatest mysteries that we have a triune God, mm -hmm. uh, which means that if we look into the, the complexity of God, the way he has revealed himself to us is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And so the Holy Ghost is not God from God. He's not another God, but he's God of God. Mm. And the best and clearest example that I can give you of that, and we've, we've discussed this in another series, but whenever you have a question, sometimes you ask yourself some things. And you're waiting for an answer from somewhere. And when you start asking questions about your life, you are aware that there's a deeper consciousness within yourself. And so in the same way, when we look at the intricacies of God, that what we see is there is a essence, his spirit, and his spirit today is what allows him to achieve his divine perfections. There are three divine perfections that lead to the divine work of God. Those three are omnipresent, omniscient, mm -hmm. and omnipotent. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about those three things in the message today. Why don't you get Psalm 139, 7 through 10? Psalm 139, 7 through 10, you want to talk about the omnipresent God. The fact of being everywhere at the same time. And a lot of times we send in God, but I'm telling you, He's already there. He's already there. There's no time, there is no space, there is no molecule, there is no atom, there is no proton, neutron, where there is no God. He's everywhere at the same time. You know, if we look at the globe, I know right now it's about 11.25, 11.30, I guess, AM. Well, over in China, it's nighttime. It's 11.25 p.m. And they've got Christians that are praying over there. And we've got Christians that are praying over here on the east, Cape, east coast of the U.S. Well, God is answering and God is present everywhere. He's there in China mm -hmm. and he's here in the U.S. at the same time. Well, how in the world can he do that? He does that through his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said, I got to leave you. Because if I don't go, then I will not be able to send forth the Spirit from the Father. Mm. And that now through his Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. 
There is no limitations of where God can be. So I know we're sending him, but he's already there. Psalm 139, you're going to understand, there is no escape from God. None. Even if you try, you just can't hide. <laughs> he's placed the Holy Ghost down inside. <laughs> Come on, what does it say? Psalm 139 and 7. What does it say, man? It reads, I can never escape from your spirit. I cannot escape from your spirit. It's impossible. God is everywhere at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes in life, especially when we're struggling, maybe we think that God's not there. But I'm telling you, he was there all the time. And maybe you're wondering in life, why in the world does some of the crazy stuff happen if, if God was really there? But I want you to understand something. Just because God knows all things, and we'll talk about that later, he does not necessarily cause all things. There's some things that are in the will of God, but there are other things that are in the will of men. And sometimes God is simply going to allow things to run their course. When he warns us and he tells us, then sometimes he has to rebuke us. And so I know sometimes we like to point the finger at God, but I want you to know that a lot of times we are responsible for some of the things that are generated and created in our lives. Mm -hmm. So we cannot always blame God. We've got to look at ourselves and understand whether or not we pay the part and whether or not we need a change of heart. But there's nowhere we can go to hide from your spirit. I don't care what you try to do. You cannot surprise God. You cannot shock him. And a lot of, that, a lot of times you think that we're doing something behind his back. Now it's always up in his face. And when you realize that it gives you a new reverence. When you know God is right there. And not only is he there on the outside, but if you're a Christian, he's right there on the inside. Mm. Come on, what does it say, man? It reads, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. I cannot do it! And if you realize that God Because he'll answer prayer by his power. As the old songwriter says, don't stop praying. The Lord is not. He's not. He's right there. Don't stop praying. Hear me your cry. Come on, read, read. It reads, if I go up to heaven, you are there. Listen, if I go up to heaven, with the angels and the 24 elders that are around the throne. You're right there in heaven. Yes. Come on. If I go down to the place of the dead, you are there. If I go down to hell, you're right there. There's nowhere I can go to escape you. Send them to the heavens, thou are there. If I make my bed in hell, you're right there. If I could grow wings like a bird and fly away, you still find me today. Come on, what does it say, man? If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the furthest 
farthest oceans, even there you, your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. Yes. So wherever I am in life, I need to get this principle. His hand is